Alrighty. You are watching Sammy the Interviewing Toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey everybody, I'm Sammy and I'm here today with Indiana author Nathan Clement. Hi Nathan, how are you today? Hi hey, Sammy, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm just fine. Um, you know, I love talking to Indiana authors. It's my favorite yeah. thing in my whole life. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana. Okay. Well, um, I am an author illustrator and I live in central Indiana and I have a family, two boys. Or 10 and 12. And um, I've lived, I'm a Hoosier, and I've pretty much lived in Indiana my whole life. We moved away for about four years between second grade and seventh grade, four and a half years or so. But we came back because we're Hoosiers. So I've been here my whole life, really. I love Hoosiers. I'm a Hoosier too. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Can you Thank tell you. us, tell us a little bit about your work? And I, I'm also interested, does having sons um, influence your work? Because I know you do lots of books about things that move, not that that kind of stuff is only for boys, but uh, I was just wondering if having sons influenced you. Yeah. You know, when I created my first book, um, I didn't have any sons, but by the time the first book hit the shelves in the bookstore, then I did. So then, yeah, I think that um, that helped influence me a little bit. So like Sammy just, just said, Sammy, um, my books are about things that go, things you can drive or machinery you can get in. And it's about those things and the, sometimes the people they work with. So the first book I did was, and I, I have them here on the show. Ooh, show, yes. Is there a glare on it? It's okay. It looks good. It's all right. Okay. That's the first book that I did. A publisher wanted to publish for me. And when it came out, it's about a, a, a truck and the man who drives the truck. And when it came out, it started doing really well, meaning people were buying it. So that we'll do more books like that. And that's what's called um, being niched. <laughs> so we I may have a niche, right? We wanted to do this kind of a book. That's so And then fun. I see in the background, um, you have job site up. I do. There's job site, all about construction yeah. workers. Yeah, I'll put the page. There's a dump truck. So if you love finding out more about how things work and how people use these things. And these are the books for you. That's and so um, I do all my work on the computer too. That's another thing to say about my work. Oh, right, of course. So you don't actually have like a messy art studio with paints dripping off the walls and things like that, huh? No paint dripping off the walls, but it's still messy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So where are you in your creative journey? How many books have you had published at this point? At this point, I'll hold up the others. I have had five. So we had one on racing. Love and, it. And uh, being from Indiana, we all love racing. This is, this is more like NASCAR racing. Right. Like, we'll take it. I mean, I prefer IndyCar, but we'll take yeah, NASCAR. Yeah, we'll talking about. And then we did one on farming. Oh, I <laughs> love Big Tractor. Thank you. This one... Won an award from the state library. Yes, got, you got all to were. Take to the National Book Festival. Right, exactly. That was so great. We got to take that book to the National Book Festival. And you know, when we were there, we actually gave out um, seeds for people for tomatoes. I think yeah, it was what it was. That was so great. And then I did one on a plane, and the people flying this plane landed in Indianapolis. So, I remember um, you can see the airport in the end, right? Yeah, in the end, I tried to use the Indianapolis Airport. Let's see if I can find that. We have a beautiful yeah. airport here in Indianapolis. I think we do, yeah. So it's right down here. Mm -hmm. off the ground. Yeah. You know, if people haven't been there, there's actually poetry written in the windows, giant yeah. feathers. It's a gorgeous airport. I just love yeah. it. This so, is what I've done. And then, you know, you asked about my creative process. Yeah. And I was wondering if I could share my screen. Sure. Yeah, let's try it. Because I'm I'm developing a new style of artwork, and my agent, who's the man who takes, oh no, it's it's been disabled. But I've got oh. I've got to see it out. <laughs> Sorry. I can't prepare. <laughs> okay, good. You can see this. a new style of artwork <gasps> that is actually done with printmaking. So I use ink, and I print my shapes. And then I, then I actually scan the shapes into my computer and put all the shapes together. 
so that it forms the picture. Oh, so I love it. Computer a little bit, but that's a new form of art that I'm uh, really hoping I can publish some books in that. So my agent takes these pieces of art and story ideas and goes to New York and visits editors and shows it to them. And so we haven't sold any of that yet, but um, we're hoping that we will. Gosh, best of luck. And those images um, seem like a bit more organic maybe than your yeah, kind of boxy quite, style. Right, they're not quite as precise or clean, so to speak. There's a lot of texture. There's a lot of kind of what I call happy accidents. So um, if things don't align or, or go together perfectly, I let that happen because I think that's interesting. And it's, it's I, very different from the other style that I'm doing. I, I like the idea of having something really different it keeps, um, keeps me fresh, I guess. Yeah, for sure. So as far as your creative journey goes, you're, you've gotten five books published so far, and you're kind of working on this new um, new style, I suppose, yeah. in your illustrations. Yeah. So where are you hoping to be someday? You want to just keep publishing books? I would like to keep publishing books. Um, I've been pretty much working full-time for myself from home, and... Um, some of that is books, but a lot of it is just art and graphics I do for other companies. And so I have, I've, I actually spend more time on the other than I do on the books. And what's happening is I'm, I'm going to go into a full-time job. So it's going to be even less time for books. Aww. But it's something that I really, um, this what I love. And so I want to continue trying to do that. As best as I can. Yeah. Well, children's librarians love it too, because we absolutely love to have, you know, a big range of books yeah. about things that go and, and we'd yeah. love to see more things from you. So Nathan, I'm talking to everybody about the current health crisis. I know a lot of authors do work from home and so maybe it doesn't feel that different, but how are you and your family doing with the current health crisis? We're doing just fine. Um, like you just said, I it didn't change the way I had to work, so I was still home, but my wife came home to, to work remotely, and then my kids, of course, came home and did their school from home, and so the house became very busy. And I do have my space in the basement, so I'm kind of off to myself anyway, but um, I, I did have to help with school. Um, but you know, when the governor said, when he was closing down the state, that they encourage outdoor activity, um, that was great because we just we went on hikes in the state parks, we went camping. So I think being outside just kept everything feeling um, a little bit more normal. We found all right. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice too. So the last thing I like to do a little show and tell with my authors. Can you share a little something there that maybe helps you with your books or anything yeah, at all? That's exactly what I brought. So when I'm doing my books, it's very important for the the type of book I'm doing to make sure that everything looks right and is correct. So I buy things like this race car that are designed to look exactly like the real thing, but just miniature. And so then I, I can just hold this at my desk or I can take pictures of it in, a, in a, an angle that's exciting. And then I can draw from that. And I did the same with the truck book. Um, the plane book, I did get a little plane that helped me some. And, um, I, I, I try to go take pictures of things, but you know, with planes, you can't just go out there and take a picture because you have to get to the airport. But in, in race cars were difficult too. I did go to the track and take some photos. But things like this help fill in the gaps where I, I couldn't get a photo you know, of the car from the top or the car from like this. So these right. kinds of things help me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I am always fascinated by the angles that artists um, draw things from, you know, because if you just hold up your car again, if you just yeah. have a car and you're just, yeah, like something, an angle like that is sort of boring, you know, yeah. it's just like from the side, not too exciting, not too dynamic, but you know, if you shift it, right at you like yeah. this, it's a lot more exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. But that might be harder to draw, right? Yeah, it's harder if you're not real familiar with something, it's harder to picture it in your own mind without seeing it. And as an art major, our professors really pressed on us that we needed to, to observe the world around us. So you, it's okay to look at things and then draw from those things to get it right and to, to learn what things really look like. Because we always think we know what something looks like. When we sit down and draw it, then we start kind of forgetting or join what we think we remember. But if you just look right at it, then that's um, the best way. It's called reference. 
That's such a great tip for all those future illustrators out well, there. Well, Nathan, this has been such a joy. Thank you so much for doing fun. it. And everybody, this is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to read local. So long, everybody. Bye-bye.